We are here today on day number 67 of the war with the terrorists in Gaza. Um, IDF forces are continuing their ground operations and uh, um, managing to kill many of the terrorists, managing to conquer new areas and to uh, um, clear them of the terrorist threats. We're talking about the IDF forces operating predominantly in the northern area of the Gaza Strip, still in the area of Sajaiya um, and around uh, Gaza City, and also extending out um, the fighting into the southern areas, into Khan Yunus and into the adjacent areas, um, to the border with Egypt, to with Rafah, and the, the fighting still uh, continuing on. Whilst it appears to be somewhat quiet, there is actually intense fighting going on. Um, and, uh, and unfortunately, alongside the terrorists being killed, we are also losing not a small amount of Israeli soldiers. Over 110 soldiers have now been killed in the Gaza Strip since the start of the operation. Whilst the terrorists and, and their supporters continuously claim that they are running out of food and fuel and water, it appears that they don't uh, uh, ever run out of rockets, uh, um, which they are firing constantly, and mortar shells that they are firing constantly, mortar shells at the areas adjacent to the Gaza Strip, and rockets further off. Um, we saw uh, yesterday and, uh, and, and through the evening um, large salvos of rocket fire towards Tel Aviv, um, the central area of, of really Israel's heartland and its civilian population, um, the area on the coastal area between Khadera and, uh, uh, um, uh, and, 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 and Khadera, uh, where you have uh, um, almost 80% of Israel's uh, civilian population and its, uh, um, and its industry between that area of Gadera in the south and Khadera in the north. And that whole area is coming under rocket fire. Tens of thousands of people who have been displaced from their homes around the Gaza Strip, and then those under rocket fire um, in Tel Aviv and around. Um, we're joined today after giving that uh, a, a brief introduction um, by uh, uh, Colonel uh, uh, um, Dr. Jacques uh, Neria. Um, Jacques is an expert on so many things, so I won't go through all of the different details, but I'll, I'm introducing him just as a as a, as, as a prequel to, to the next update, which is also, and which is what, what we're going to focus on today, is Lebanon. Lebanon, Israel's north. In Lebanon, we have Hezbollah, another Iranian proxy, constantly involved in a war of attrition against Israel. Hezbollah has been sitting on that border, constantly firing rockets, anti-tank missiles at Israeli civilians, at Israeli soldiers. Day 67 of the war in Gaza, and day 66 of the war of attrition um, with Hezbollah in the north. Um, and that's really what we're going to discuss with, with, with Jacques today. Just before we continue on with Jacques, the wider area, the Houthis are continuing on uh, um, with their activities, interrupting the freedom of navigation uh, every once in a while, shooting missiles and rockets and even ballistic missiles at Israel uh, uh, and sending uh, um, unmanned aircraft vehicles, UAVs, towards Israel, obviously loaded with explosives. Explosives They are being intercepted for now. Um, in Judea and Samaria, we're continuing on with the fighting against the terrorist organizations. Um, and in Israel, um, within the Green Line, still remaining uh, quiet. Hezbollah, Lebanon. Hezbollah and Lebanon are, a, a, um, are an institute in and of themselves. We have a long history of terrorism from Hezbollah in the north. Obviously, the last major confrontation um, in 2006 with the Second Lebanon War. It started very similar to um, the, the war in the south now with a massive bombardment um, in order to divert the course, the, uh, the attention of, of the forces, and then with a ground infiltration with uh, Hezbollah uh, terrorists coming in and murdering soldiers and, and, and kidnapping their bodies. Um, and then that developed into a 51-day war. Um, relative quiet from Hezbollah recently. Um, the next major event that we had with Hezbollah um, was in 2018, when Israel exposed a number of cross-border uh, um, attack tunnels that had been dug 
for a ver- over a very extended period of time by Hezbollah, allow to provide for their Radwan forces. Radwan forces are the elite forces of Hezbollah, similar to the Nukhba forces of uh, Hamas. Their task was to infiltrate through these tunnels into Israel and kill as many people as possible. Luckily, those tunnels were exposed and then uh, uh, neutralized. But really, we're seeing that whole event with Hezbollah. They have their own agenda uh, um, to attack. They're also part of the wider program of running Lebanon. Um, so, so to give us a little bit more information on that and to we can develop the, the conversation from there, Jack, explain to us really the background of Hezbollah, what their well, goals are, what they're trying to achieve. Why are they part of this war? Well, Hezbollah, as you know, has been founded in 1982 by Iran. This is basically an Iranian organization that speaks Lebanese. And uh, the uh, the Iranians wanted to create a, 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 an organization that would counter the Amal organization, the the the, the acting and the the, the factual uh, the party that was that represented at the time part of the uh, Shiite community in, in Lebanon. So they wanted to counter uh, to counter this uh, the uh, th- this influence by creating their own th- their own uh, organization and uh, uh, and supplying uh, th- this organization with weapons, with equipment, with monies. And uh, uh, little by little, they built uh, a, a state inside the state, whereas Hezbollah has its own clinics, it has its own uh, schools, its own banks, its own supermarkets, its own, uh, the, I mean, the, they receive money from uh, from Iran. It, we're talking about a huge amount of, uh, of money every year. The, the financing of Iran is about uh, around the 300 to 500 million dollars a year, whereas the, the 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 Shiite community in the world, especially in West Africa and in uh, in Brazil and uh, Argentina, uh, in the Iguazu, the tri- triangle, s- sends almost ten percent of all the revenues to Hezbollah, which mount, amounts a huge a huge amount of money. And uh, Hezbollah is uh, has be- has become not only a, a social movement but a military movement because by creating its militia, it has formed itself by fighting Israel. It was the first organization that uh, that began suicide bombing against uh, targets the Americans, the French, and the uh, the Israelis, and they were the, they were just copied afterwards by other jihadist organizations. Hezbollah was asked in the 2011. Uh, at the beginning of the civil war in Syria to intervene in Syria in order to help and uh, to sustain the uh, the uh, the Assad regime and this is the, what they did they sent their best troops to uh, to Syria and they fought there and uh, and in fact uh, helped uh, Bashar Assad uh, survive and uh, uh, part of those uh, they had more than 2500 uh, uh, fighters killed uh, uh, during that war and thousands that, that were uh, wounded but it didn't matter it didn't matter for the as long as they were representing the uh, the, the iran hezbollah is very close to the iranian revolutionary guards at the time, Qasem Soleimani was a personal friend of Hassan Nasrallah, the actor, the, the acting Secretary General of uh, of Hezbollah. And you know, when when he was killed, it was almost a, a, a national mourning in, uh, in Lebanon. His uh, his successor Kani is a is a close associate of uh, Hassan Nasrallah. And a few a few weeks before the uh, the beginning of the war, he was reported to be in Lebanon. And uh, coordinating the the war efforts between Hamas, uh, Islamic Jihad, and and Hezbollah. So uh, when we are talking about Hezbollah, we have to uh, to to understand that Hezbollah is the actual the a- actual uh, arm of uh, of uh, Iran. It is the, it, it, it serves Iran in training the trainees in Iraq, for instance, in Syria, where they, they have a, a presence on the Golan, and uh, they were the ones who trained the 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 Houthis. In Yemen, in firing the in manning and firing, manipulating the the, the ballistic missiles and other drones that uh, that are right now being used by uh, by the uh, the Houthis. So, in, in a nutshell, I mean, the, uh, Hezbollah is the uh, is the arm, the actual arm of uh, of Iran. Iran will fight to the last Hezbollah fighters, and uh, and Hezbollah will obey. 
the supreme guide uh, directives given by, uh, by by Tehran uh, to the letter. So uh, at this moment, uh, at this moment, and uh, because of the, uh, we have uh, we we have seen in the last year a series of provocations that uh, Hezbollah uh, did uh, facing Israel, and uh, and to my astonishment, I mean, uh, our, our be bewilderment, Israel did not respond. It began with sending drones at the Karish gas field and without any response from Israel. And then there were the cameras that were uh, along the border that were just uh, attacked and uh, dismantled. And then there were those uh, intrusion into Israeli territory and uh, the, the, which, I mean, uh, uh, one one of the most uh, 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 the, uh, famous one was the, the reaching Megiddo, the junction inside, deep inside Israeli territory. And then there were was this this tent that was uh, that was set uh, uh, on the uh, blue line between uh, Lebanon and Israel, and then there was those rockets fired on uh, on Israel, and Israel did not respond. So the answer, the 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 the, 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 the interpretation by Hassan Nasrallah was in fact that Israel was suffering from weakness, and that it was a matter a matter of time before this Zionist. Uh, state would disintegrate. So this is this is where where less the where more or less the 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 war between Hamas and Israel began. Whereas at the, on the Lebanese side, on the uh, Hezbollah side, this was the side that was claiming that we are talking about a united front that would span from Lebanon to Syria to Iraq and Yemen and of course the West Bank and the West Bank and uh, and Gaza. And this is what the, the big surprise was that Hamas began on the 7th of October its attack on uh, uh, its massacre on the 7th of October. And in fact, well, the uh, Hezbollah was surprised by the timing. And this is why at the beginning it was a little bit hesitating. We didn't know exactly what was the, what was the answer that uh, Hezbollah was preparing. But beginning of the eighth day till now, we have seen uh, an ascent. We have seen the uh, escalation of, <coughs> of uh, Hezbollah actions against Israel. To such extent that today there have there, there have been there, there, there have been alerts in a very deep uh, deep areas inside Israel that were not reached till three days ago. We are talking about uh, Akko, we are talking about Klil, we are talking about uh, Kfar Radim, we are talking Rosh Pina, Safed. These are areas that are well beyond the four to five kilometers that during those sixty days we were exchanging fire between us and uh, in uh, and Hezbollah. Now, what I mean, the, the 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 big question was why did not Hezbollah join the war effort? I mean, and uh, Nassan, uh, Hassan Nasrallah explained. He said, "Look, we have an uh, we have a very uh, we have uh, a, a border that is very very active every day. We are we are waging a war against Israel." Attacking with missiles, attacking with the the, the different uh, this is not a, a peaceful uh, uh, the border anymore. Second, we have forced Israel to evacuate its citizen, sixty thousand uh, citizens from the, the the border area with Lebanon inside Israel, and and uh, and this is uh, this is quite uh, the, the quite important, and we have paralyzed most of uh, the, a great part of the mobilized uh, reserve. And uh, uh, they were that were deployed facing Lebanon. This is the accomplishment that uh, Hezbollah did, and uh, this is what's uh, what's happening all the time. So the big question is the the the, the biggest question is whether Hezbollah will uh, will it cross the threshold of uh, uh, of a, a war of attrition and turn it into something that uh, the, the into an all out war against Israel. Now let us remember something. Remember that. On the American side, the U.S. administration has asked Israel very openly and uh, with no, I mean, with no hesitation, you don't start a war with Lebanon. You, we, uh, it's not in the interest of the United States. We want this conflict to be limited between you and Hamas. So, on the, the and Israel has responded because. At this point in time, it is it is convenient that uh, we, we fight only with one front, with the uh, uh, with the priority given to Hamas, and then in the aftermath we'll see what to do with the Lebanese uh, with the Lebanese border. The the big question is the following: What will you do if the war ends and the Radwan units will still be under the the windows of all the localities that Israel has evacuated? 
unlike unlike Gaza, unlike the the, the communities around Gaza that were separated on about hundreds uh, hundreds of meters, but I mean very close to the border. In the Lebanese context, the houses and the the the, the fields are definitely on the border, uh, are on the obstacle, meaning that on the other side, Hezbollah can look at the Israelis and can even uh, talk to them. This is a situation that no Israeli will accept. Have, bearing in mind the precedent the, of of what happened on the seventh of October, we know for sure that the plan that was executed by, by by Hamas is exactly the copy of the plan prepared by Hezbollah since two thousand and eleven. So the the question, as I said, is: Are we going to witness a, a, a widening of the conflict? And what the, uh, at this point, I would say that the answer the resides definitely in the hands of Hezbollah and not in the hands of Israel, because we are not interested right now in widening the, the scope of the confrontation, the military confrontation with Hezbollah. So this is more or less at, at this point, and I'm open for questions, of course, Maurice. So, so, so Jack, uh, part of the uh, um, the discussion with, with, with Hezbollah and, and Israel, uh, similar to, 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 to Hamas, we do have discussions with Hezbollah. So I didn't hear you. What do I mean? Last year, and you mentioned a uh, um, gas platform in the Mediterranean Sea. We actually did respond uh, um, to that, that attack. Unfortunately, it was not a good response. With the negotiating team of the Biden administration, with the, under the leadership of Amos Hochstein, um, we, 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 Israel really retreated from all of its demands in the, the Mediterranean and agreed to accept Hezbollah's dictate regarding the boundary of the, the, the exclusive economic zone between Israel and, and Hezbollah. At the time, um, we were told, both Israel's government at the time and, uh, and, and, and the American uh, uh, interlocutors, uh, uh, told us that this was a historic agreement, that, that we'd reached a, um, really a, a, an opportunity for peace with Hezbollah. What would you say... Is well, there a real opportunity for that to happen? What, no. What was Hezbollah no, no, no. doing? Hezbollah's ideology is very clear. First is to set in Lebanon uh, uh, an Islamic Republic. I mean, when in 1985, 1985, Hassan Nasrallah expressed himself and saying that he hoped that Lebanon would become uh, 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 part of the Islamic Republic, everybody laughed at that. And the, the, you, you crazy Lebanon turning into a, an Islamic Republic. Well, uh, the Lebanon today is held by Hezbollah, is paralyzed because of Hezbollah. And, you know, Hezbollah is dictating all the, the, uh, all the events in Lebanon, be it, I mean, th there is no government. There is no, the, 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 uh, we have a, a transitional government, that we have a transitional prime minister. We don't have a, pr a president in Lebanon and we don't have a chief of the army in Lebanon. So when when the uh, the news and the information now that flows about the contacts, diplomatic contacts of, uh, about uh, reaching an agreement on the withdrawal of, uh, of Hezbollah from the border to the Litani River and beyond, with whom are we talking? There's no government. There's no one that can sign an agreement with Israel because, because according to the Lebanese constitution, there, there's only a legal government, a legal president, a legal prime minister who can sign this agreement. So it's only, I mean, the, 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 it, it's only talk to, to talk to, to do nothing. So th this is this is the situation, and the situation is such that I mean that, that it it is very volatile. Now, Al the Hezbollah has been I mean has been under attack. He has suffered more than a hundred. They say that maybe two hundred uh, uh, of of its uh, of its fighters were killed by Israeli fire. Compared to the uh, organization, this is a huge amount of casualties. L lately. The, uh, according to the Arab press, the, uh, Israel conducted uh, the uh, air raids in, in Syria and killed three of the most important military leaders of Hezbollah. And this is why Hezbollah has taken the, uh, the, the decision to, uh, to, uh, to fire back to, to fire back at uh, Israeli uh, at Israeli the, uh, localities that were beyond beyond the four, four to five kilometers that used to be accepted between us and Hezbollah. So the the issue right now is the following: If Hezbollah, by by chance, I mean the, the, by mischance from uh, for us, 
hits a target and kills Israelis, because right now he has not succeeded in doing so. But if he kills uh, the, uh, Israelis, then Israel will have no choice but to go to the Americans and say, okay, gentlemen, we, we cannot accept this fact. Already the Americans have stopped, them, uh, stopped us at the beginning of the war from waging a preemptive strike on Lebanon, on the positions of Hezbollah. Now it will cost us a lot of blood if we continue on, 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 this, on this policy. And unfortunately, we might reach a situation where the fighting in, in Gaza will keep on, uh, will keep on, on the slow fire, on, on low fire. And in Lebanon, we don't have it. Uh, we don't have an answer. We will have to, 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 to create a situation that would allow, that would allow the inhabitants to, to go back to, to the, the, to their localities. How this can be, how can this happen? Only, in my view, only with negotiations between the U.S. administration and Tehran. And what would be the price of it? The, the price of it, Israel would have to pay for, with that. It, it will pay with the, with the uh, Iranian asking for more lenient uh, uh, policy on, uh, on the uh, nuclear, with more uh, monies to be, the, the, to, to, to be the, the defrozen and uh, with the, uh, accepting the hegemony of Iran in the Middle East. This is what, uh, what, what is the, uh, the, uh, the, the situation if we have to, uh, to deal with the, the to, to deal and, and say that we cannot accept uh, the, uh, the Radwan units to be on our border. We want them to withdraw. And the only withdrawal would be given by Iran if it receives from the United uh, the United States the proper uh, the, the proper uh, uh, say steps that would allow uh, Iran to continue its uh, its hegemonic policy. So so once since that uh, um, description that you gave uh, Jacques is is really so clear. His Hezbollah doesn't hide um, its either its affiliations or its intentions. It's created havoc in Lebanon. Um, the, the 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 deal last year with the uh, the maritime uh, border or, or, or the, the maritime demarcation of the, their economic zones um, was signed in a rush in order to pass it through just a day before um, the uh, the last uh, 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 Lebanese president was, was meant to finish his term, um, at the, if I'm not mistaken, at the end of October last year. And yeah. we knew that we were going into a situation of of uncertainty, of, of really of, of, of chaos in Lebanon. Um, and and yet we, we we still rushed into that into that event, giving up really on on decades of positions that Israel had held, um, claiming a different uh, um, a line. So what what seemed to have pushed us forward there was was the Biden administration again with the leadership of Amos Hochstein. Now what we're seeing again now is that same Biden administration with the same persona with Amos Hochstein, now trying to find a solution on the north. Now, what they're presenting this time is that Israel and uh, uh, will somehow allow Hezbollah a, 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 a ladder to climb down from, and that we will somehow try and implement um, UN Security Resolution 1701. This was the resolution uh, uh, adopted at the end of the Second Lebanese War, 2006, that said that Hezbollah, all Hezbollah forces needed to withdraw from the southern area of, of Lebanon and only be found, if at all, north of the Litani River. In the southern area, there would only be the Lebanese army and weapons could only be um, brought into, into Lebanon with the approval of the Lebanese government. Now, we all know that that was, the decision was, was basically a, 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 a joke uh, at Israel's expense. Hezbollah never retreated out. The Lebanese uh, uh, um, army never took control of the, the, the southern areas and weapons continued to flow into, into Lebanon to Hezbollah from Iran because Hezbollah was basically the government. So why do you think that the, the same Biden administration with the same persona, with, uh, with the same Amos Hochstein, is now again trying to persuade Israel to rebuy that Really, that 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 rotten corpse that yeah. is one seven zero one. Well, the, as you say, I mean, we have to we have to insist that seventeen zero one is dead. This is a resolution that has not been applied, 
And uh, one of the elements inside the resolution was the dissolution of all militias in Lebanon and uh, being included in the Lebanese army. Do you see Hezbollah committing suicide? Certainly not. Certainly not. Do you see Hezbollah accepting uh, the 1701 be, uh, be, before being defeated on the ground? Certainly not. Do you see that, uh, I mean, the Hezbollah right now is backed by Iraqi militias that have deployed also in South Lebanon. So we are talking about a, 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 a situation that could definitely uh, transform the area into something very, 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 very unknown. I mean, unlike Hamas, which is, I mean, which is a, a menace, I mean, a threat, definitely a threat, but I mean, it's not an ex existential threat. Hezbollah has the means to attain, to uh, to hit, I mean, sensitive areas inside Israel with the huge arsenal of missiles, long range missiles that he has, and those missiles that were not destroyed by Israel. Now, what is the uh, administration, the American administration looking at? They want uh, they want peace. They, they don't want to be involved in another conflict. They don't want uh, the, the, to have, an, uh, again, boots on the ground, certainly in Iraq, where their bases are being attacked day after day, day after today and there's nothing that they they can answer now look at what's happening with the houthis it's the same i mean the houthis are now firing i mean at ease they're firing at the norwegian uh, ship another ship and another ship and they are blocking the the the, uh, the the international waterways and the international community has not reacted till now they're only by intercepting here and there uh drones and here and there the cruise missiles and ballistic missiles which part of them were intercepted by israel now imagine that we didn't have the uh, the, the the arrow two or arrow three and one one of those missiles a ballistic missile with 600 or the, more than uh, 600 kilos or almost 1000 kilos of explosive would land in in a lot what would be the the manage that would be created imagine such a missile that can hit dimona that can hit uh, other sensitive places in the uh, in Israel, this is a, a situation that Israel cannot live with. The, the, we cannot accept that uh, the, the, all those, the, uh, uh, I mean, uh, manners of the uh, of the U.S. administration to calm us down, and say, okay, it'll be okay, it'll be it'll be okay. We give you weapons, we give you ammunition, we give you whatever you want, but please do not go outside the, uh, outside the, the scope of a, a, a combat between you and Hamas. In fact, we are in fact trapped. We are trapped in a situation where there is right now no other solution. Where the, and the only solution is to hit hard on Hezbollah. But my, my big question is, is this the moment now? I think that's not the moment. It's it's something that we have to remember, to keep in mind. And once we finish at least the main job in, in, in Gaza, then we will have to turn against uh, the, to, to the Lebanese because this is the only language they understand. They don't understand the other language. They they interpret it and they have been interpreted uh, interpreting it since the, the since the two years ago as an internal inherent weakness of Israel. And uh, remember the famous sentence that uh, the Hassan Nasrallah said a few the speeches ago. He said. If, Lebanon, if Israel was what it was 30 years ago, and Lebanon was what it was 30 years ago, this tent, he was talking about the tent on the blue line, would not have lasted two, two, uh, two minutes. This is the situation. So Israel is weak. And because of its weakness, we can afford to uh, to provoke Israel as much as possible. And the fact is that it began the first day with uh, some uh, some mortars, and then there were uh, there were some rockets fired uh, here and there, and then there were the the Bukan missiles, and then there were the outposts that were attacked. Then there were the uh, uh, and uh, you know uh, and it's expanding, expanding, escalating, escalating. And Israel right now is on the defensive. This is I mean we are firing back. We are trying to to get to get targets, but we are very careful not to go beyond the four, five kilometers that uh, that, that have been attacked, uh, I mean, similarly on a mirror-like uh, situation were by Hezbollah. This is the situation, and it's uh, it's a pity that we have reached this the, 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 the this uh, this threshold where we the, the where the decision to is not in the hands of Israel, but it's in the hand of Hezbollah. So, so Jack, one one of your many uh, um, uh, accolades, uh, um, as well as being an author, uh, a scholar. You were uh, one of uh, Yitzhak Rabin's uh, uh, close advisors. Do you think that the situation, and you said if it had been 30 years ago, a different Lebanon, a different Israel, a different leadership, do you think that it's a question of the Israeli leadership? Would Yitzhak Rabin have 
acted differently uh, um, to uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu? Would it be it would it been the same function of 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 American pressure, which I still don't understand exactly what their interest is in maintaining um, Hezbollah as a terrorist organization in Iran is. Um, is is that a function? Is it is it a function of personality or of uh, of, of conflicts and, and 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 interests? Look, the Maurice, from what I remember from uh, the, the uh, Israq Rabin was the fact that uh, all the big decisions he he made were just a, a great surprise to the Americans. The Americans didn't uh, they didn't think that uh, we would sign an agreement with the with the Palestinians. We signed an agreement with the Palestinians. Didn't think that we would wage a war in Lebanon in 1993, and we waged a Lebanon uh, a war. They didn't think that we would deport for the 450 uh, 15 uh, leaders of Hamas into uh, into South Lebanon, and we did that. And the Americans were surprised all the time. Whereas, if you look at what's happening today. It's almost coordinated to the latter. I mean, the, 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 there has been an unprecedented situation where the the, the 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 Secretary of State is participating in the war cabinet. I mean, the, this is crazy. The, I mean, where is our independence? That is something that which is which is which is quite true. I, I, I think it's been a source of bemusement to many people. How it could possibly be that a representative of a foreign country. Um, important as it may be and as and as senior as it may be could participate in discussions of Israel's war cabinet as to what's going on how it can defend itself against whom it can defend itself and 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 to what extent it can defend itself i think that's definitely been one of the the the, the more surprising i think uh, developments as as part of this uh, um as part of this ongoing war but yeah. where do we where do we see uh, um the things with uh, uh, Lebanon going, Jacques. As you okay. said, the, the this, was, the, have... the, this was the, this was uh, I think my, my last remark concerning Lebanon. As I see it today, and because of the limits put on us by the American administration, we should concentrate on the four or five kilometers beyond the Lebanese border and eliminate, erase totally all Hezbollah positions and create a situation where this the, this land, this border, the, this the, this sort of belt that uh, extends from Rojanika to Hardom becomes a no man's land or a demilitarized zone that anyone who put his feet there would be killed. And this would allow, and then with the, and then the is uh, the IDF will have to to beef up its forces along the border in order to give the uh, inhabitants the feeling of security that they will allow them to go to come back there and this is this an interim situation until a bigger de decision is taken to uh, to to eliminate and to uh, to eradicate Hezbollah from the, the the from its position today in South Lebanon this is the only language that Hezbollah will understand we could live we could live unfortunately under under fire but this but, but this is not this wouldn't be the first time that uh, we would do that on the contrary uh, asking the inhabitants to go back to, the, to, to their localities would be, in fact, the picture of the victory of us uh, uh, upon uh, Hezbollah. Has, has Hezbollah, to the best of your uh, uh, um, knowledge, Jacques, made a strategic decision to, 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 to change its position? Why do I ask? Because uh, until the 6th of October, Hezbollah was uh, in its positions south of the Litani. It's in positions sometimes really in houses on the Lebanese side uh, that immediately overlook uh, um, the border itself, sometimes just meters away. Um, one of my daughters uh, was in the in the army uh, and she was up on the northern uh, northern border and she said she was literally could see the Hezbollah uh, uh, terrorists waving, looking through their binoculars at them at, at, at very close distance. So what's changed in the last 66 days? Do you feel? Do you think that Hezbollah was similar to uh, uh, Hamas, planning that surprise attack, and that they now pose and continue to pose an imminent danger to to the north? Or have we seen Hezbollah doing what they're doing, what they've been doing for the last, I don't know, since since two thousand six for the last eighteen years, sixteen years? They're sitting in positions, threatening as they may be, but not really posing a real imminent danger of action against Israel. Now, Did yeah, they make that Moist, change? Moist, we are witnessing a warlike situation in the north. We, let, let us be keen with ourselves. 
These are not battle days. These are, it's a war. It's being conducted between us and Hezbollah, but it is a limited in time. It's what we call in the military jargon, a, a, a low intensity conflict. This is, this is the way it is right now in an attrition war. But this is war. I mean, they're attacking uh, the Israeli positions and the army positions in all, uh, all, all over the border. It's not only one point. They have been, they have been hitting now civilian, uh, civilian targets because they want to, to create Havoc uh, also, and to uh, to kill as many Israelis as possible, because in the in the in their countdown, they are far behind behind us. They, you know, the, the parity they wanted to, to for each Lebanese killed, we'll have an Israeli killed. Well, the situation is not like that. They have they they have in uh, facing them a situation where they cannot overcome. They have they they cannot overcome the uh, the obstacle that uh, uh, that the IDF has put in front of them, and they are trying everything to to overcome it. And because of that, the risk of escalation and the risk of uh, uh, of flare up. Uh, uh, are bigger than in the past because the more Hezbollah is being hit by its, its own operatives are being killed in Syria or in Lebanon. And in L the, the last ones were killed in their car. Three of them, the most important uh, leaders of uh, of, uh, of uh, Hezbollah in, in Syria. So the, he has to respond because he has an audience and he has also to 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 respond to to his I mean uh, to, to his base. And his base is asking him, okay, you promised to be part of the, the effort of uh, the Palestinians and they are left on their own. You promised this and you promised that and you did not uh, the, you did not fulfill your promises. And this is very hard for Hezbollah to accept. And this is why it pushes, it pushes him to react more and more uh, uh, diff in a difficult way concerning Israel. And we have seen the, literally uh, the day after day, the expansion of the attacks of Hezbollah against Israel. And this is where we are today. We are already in Akko. Next, uh, next up would be where, what? The uh, the Krayot near the, 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 the northern uh, fringes of Haifa, and then to be Haifa. So the, this is where we stand, and because the answer of Israel is just limited, and we are not hitting hard because of the American administration, so he is emboldened and giving more than he is trying more and more. He says, "As as long as my provocations are accepted by Israel, why shouldn't I continue?" And what's going on in in Lebanon? We had reports a, a, a few weeks ago. We spoke with uh, with one of the other uh, uh, Jerusalem uh, uh, Center fellows, with Yoni Ben Menachem, who is describing the. Uh, um, the the resistance of the Lebanese population, the objections of the Lebanese population to a certain extent to the actions of Hezbollah. What what's going on there with 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 with, with the, the average Lebanese person on the street? Are they interested in again going back to the war in two thousand and six, where Israel really did destroy large areas of, of, of Beirut and, and 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 of southern Lebanon, or, or are they just interested in trying to get out of their own Financial difficulties. Lebanon, uh, as a country that's already been declared bankrupt, that that has tremendous uh, uh, um, uh, financial difficulties and, and continuing financial difficulties. What's going on there? How does Hezbollah uh, respond to the, the 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 desires of the Lebanese people? Look at what's happening in uh, in Gaza. I mean, the, the the people there are. I mean, uh, more than a million and a half uh, people have been evacuated from the northern part of Gaza to the southern part of Gaza. They are living now in uh, uh, impossible conditions. And from the here and there, you can hear criticism against uh, uh, against Hamas, who has left them. Uh, I mean, uh, the, and they are they are the 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 the, uh, the, the, the sac they are being sacrificed by 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 uh, Hamas. And but I mean nothing has been uh, nothing is done except uh, from uh, two or three people who have uh, taken some courage in their hands and expressed themselves. This is the this is the case in Lebanon. It the the, the case the, the the criticism against Hezbollah stops at the axis Beirut Damascus, meaning that the northern part of Lebanon with the Christians are the ones who are more afraid of what would happen in the in the south rather than the the, the, the Hezbollah itself and all those who are under the sovereignty or under the scope and the hegemony of Hezbollah does do, do not even dare speak about the, their mind and if they and, and only lately last week there was a, a, there was one of the leaders the former leaders uh, uh, military leaders of uh, of Hezbollah 
who refused to go and fight in Syria, well, he, he was found dead with six bullets in his uh, skull. This is the, this is the kind of, uh, of, of regime that Hezbollah is, uh, is enforcing in South Lebanon. So in this, uh, in this atmosphere, do you think that what, what, what is being heard and heralded that uh, this, uh, they, they, want, they want something else? No, definitely not. And even if they think so, they will not express themselves. So, so, so one of the questions that, that, that one of our regular viewers, uh, Lise Corson, uh, has asked, uh, uh, Jacques, is uh, given the situation that you've described, given the situation that we're in, given the fact that Hezbollah is a terrorist organization uh, um, resigned to um, destroying Israel to the best of its, uh, its ability, to murdering Israelis, that it doesn't really care about the, the, the Lebanese population, but rather serves solely its, its, its Iranian masters. And and given the situation that that we cannot continue on with tens of thousands of our citizens now being uh, uh, um, really uh, uh, evacuated from that that northern front and and living now constantly as refugees in their own countries, do you think that it's when do you think the time will be? I'll I'll just rephrase a little bit Lisa's question. When do you think the time will will come when Israel will have to say to the U.S. You know what? We are no longer willing to tolerate this situation, and we are going to act against Hezbollah all through Lebanon, starting in Beirut, starting with the uh, just a few years ago, uh, um, Prime Minister Netanyahu and, and the IDF exposed a series of aerial pictures in which they uh, uh, pointed specifically to Hezbollah assets, rocket fire, missile uh, uh, um, depots that they had spread all around. Uh, uh, Beirut, by the airports, by schools, by by other strategic uh, 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 assets. When do you think that time will come when we will have to say <coughs> we need to destroy that enemy in the same way as we are now destroying uh, uh, Hamas? The time was yesterday, and even before yesterday. And I mean, the, the, there's there's no way there's no way we can live with this threat. All the, the I mean, the hanging on us. I mean, and uh, and uh, and preventing our the, our country to live uh, normally. This is uh, this is insane. This is insane. I mean, the uh, and then uh, what, what you you're talking about again. I mean, the, talking to the Americans and uh, coordinating with the Americans. Well, you know, there's a special, there's a very very known uh, uh, Western movie that they say if you if you want to shoot, shoot, don't talk. And uh, this is the, the situation. We have to shoot. We have to shoot in order to make us uh, heard, to be heard by others. Because if we don't shoot, well, we accept the situation. And this is uh, at this point. I mean, I say it's all. Yesterday was the time, and even the day before yesterday was the time to to react. And not, I mean, we keep on thinking European. We keep on thinking Israelis. We have to speak Arabic like the Arabs. We have to speak Lebanese like the Lebanese. And if we don't, uh, they will understand only the, this language. They will not understand any other language because they understand it. They will interpret it as a weakness of Israel. So if you were speaking now uh, um, in, in, uh, on, on behalf of Israel, in the name of the Israeli people, the Israeli government, to Amos Hochstein and to President Biden, what would you say to him? I would say to him, with all due respect, uh, Mr. President, with all due respect of the, the Hochstein, you, were, you served in the paratroopers and you have been also, the, you know exactly what is the mentality of Israel. We cannot accept the situation. We will act according to our best interest. And our best interest is to just to uh, to uh, to, uh, to allow our citizens a situation where they can, they can come back. Now, the sooner we react on the Lebanon, the sooner we do, and the the the, long, the, the shorter the, the 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 shorter the time will be that uh, to reach a settlement. But the longer we the, we keep on waiting for Gaza, which will take uh, months and maybe year uh, afterwards, then you mean the, the, you will have no more oxygen in your lungs. You would I mean you will say, okay, we have finished now in Gaza. Let's turn to the north. Who can do that? It's impossible. Impossible. I mean, the, an army is not a toy that you can change immediately and say, "Okay, now you just you just attack in the north." This is not uh, this is not feasible. That's something which I, uh, um, I think is 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 probably the most accurate assessment of the situation uh, um, that I've heard in a long time, Jacques. Um, moving uh, uh, um, just a little bit on, two minutes of, of, of a final uh, uh, comment. What will Hezbollah do? Um, when Israel does start uh, um, that 
massive offensive that you're saying is, is, is so critical. Hezbollah, it's not a secret. They have not a small amount of both rockets, which they can fire with any type of degree of success, yes or no. But they also have hundreds of precision, long-range uh, uh, missiles, which, given a, a, a wider Israeli response, they would probably uh, uh, use. Where do you think that would go? How do you, how do, would we respond to that? You said, what would happen if a, if one of these rockets suddenly falls on 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 an Israeli site and causes a number of deaths? Um, is is that at the moment? Do you see it just as coincidence, or as something which Hezbollah is waiting really to to bring out its 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 wider uh, arsenal? Something to do with coordination with Iran? You know, Maurice. In order to fire long range missiles, you have to prepare the ground. And I hope that the military intelligence will have enough time and enough uh, 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 possibilities to uh, to discern these activities and hit it before the, the, the missiles are fired against Israel. This is one thing. Second, I think that we have good information about where are the depots of those missiles. And I hope that uh, uh, by when the green light is given, then we will attack first and uh, and cover the, these these targets. Third, we have to be ready for missiles to land into Israel. And uh, we have means, I mean, that uh, we we cannot talk about uh, in order to to, uh, to make uh, Hezbollah understand that he cannot fire at ease. It's a two-way uh, highway. It's not a one-way highway. So, I mean, the, if he understands that, he understands very clearly that the, uh, the, the lesson that would be taught by Israel to Hezbollah would be such that Hezbollah would have to remember it for, for years. That's something uh, um, which I believe uh, um, is probably the best deterrent when you use force against an enemy that only understands force. And as we saw as a result, at least uh, temporarily after the Second uh, Lebanon War, um, that Hezbollah was to a great extent uh, um, stripped of its assets in and around Beirut and its terror assets, that it was deterred uh, um, for an extended period of time. Um, maybe that's something that we uh, will have to do uh, uh, again, uh, uh, as you say, very, very soon. Yeah, um, no, but like like Begin said uh, many times, he said, and the time will come that we will have peace for 40 years. Exactly. And, and that's what we uh, uh, have to hope for, at least 40 years. Um, Jacques, uh, uh, with those final comments, as ever, our timer, unfortunately, has gone by so quickly and has run out. Um, so thank you uh, 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 again for your uh, um, for your comments and, and, and your commentary. Um, we will be back with you, everyone, at the Jerusalem Center uh, briefing tomorrow afternoon at four o'clock Israel time, nine o'clock on the Eastern Coast, and very early in the morning on the West Coast. Um, and uh, we hope to see you again. In the meantime, have a happy Hanukkah and a, a good morning, day, afternoon, evening, um, and keep safe, everyone. Thank you very much.